Tip number one, go to where it says DaVinci Resolve next to File, then go to Preference, switch to the User tab, and go to Project Save and Load, and enable Live Save. This will automatically save everything you do in DaVinci Resolve while you're editing, which eliminates the need to manually save every time. Tip number two, importing your project without the need of creating bins inside of DaVinci Resolve. You just simply go to the location of your project, click on it, drag and drop it, and there it is, your entire folder structure with your files. Now for tip number three, I'm going to show you how you can select individual parts from a clip and drag it to the timeline. For this, we need the dual viewer mode enabled. So we have our source monitor and our playback monitor at the same time. Double click on your footage, drag your cursor at some point in the clip, press I on your keyboard for an in point, go further, press O for an out point, and now when you place your mouse over the clip, you see you have two options to import only the video or only the audio or both. This workflow tip is useful because you can just extract the audio if you only need the audio or the video only if you need the video or if you want just a portion of the clip with the in and out points and just dragging the clip, you got what you want from the video. Next up, tip number four, keyboard layout customization. Go to DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customization, and these are the default settings that DaVinci Resolve provides. Now, if you do not make any changes to the default settings, but you do not want to use the DaVinci Resolve layout, or you're used to another program, you have a few options in this drop-down menu, Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Media Composer, or Pro Tools. Now, if you do not want to use the default settings of any layout, change the shortcuts on your keyboard and then go to the three dot menu and save them as a new preset. Now, if you have already a keyboard layout exported from another software, use the import preset option. Now for tip number five, I'm going to show you how to change your audio format from mono to stereo. First, let's hear the clip. This is a recording next to a busy street. Now let's change it. Go to media pool to your audio track, right click, Clip Attributes, move to the Audio tab, and from Mono, change it to Stereo. And on the Source Channel, from Mute to Embedded Channel 1. Click OK. Now let's see the clip again. This is a recording next to a busy street. This is a recording next to a busy street. All fixed. Next up, tip number six, the Compound Clip. If you have multiple clips on your timeline and you just want one to work with, Select all your desired clips, right click and create a new compound clip. Give it a name and there you have it. One single clip to manipulate. But if you want to access again the clips that are inside, then tip number seven will help you with that. And that is multiple timelines. Go to the timeline viewer option and select stack timelines. Click on the plus to create a new timeline. Go back to timeline one right click on the compound clip and open in timeline and as you can see it opened in the newly created timeline and you have access to your clips again and if you make changes inside a compound clip the compound clip itself will not be affected and it will reflect the changes without a problem tip number eight if you have gaps between your clips and you want to remove it instead of just moving it by hand select all of them go to edit and delete gaps and voila next on the list tip number nine adjustment clips let's close out the media pool and go to the effects tab and under toolbox and effects we have the adjustment clip let's grab it and drag it to the timeline over our text clip now normally we would edit our source file but if we want to leave it intact and still apply edits we use the adjustment clip if i disable the video track you can see the source clip was not altered This is a safer way to approach editing without affecting your source file. Finally, the last tip will be about the DaVinci Resolve pages. As you can see, I am missing the cut page. To bring it back, go to Workspace, Show Page, and enable the cut page. And now I can easily access it. And to make it disappear again, Workspace, Show Page, and Disable. And now if I move away, it will disappear. Now these are just a few things that you can use to improve your DaVinci Resolve workflow, but if you want to learn more, check out these two videos. And until next time, drop a comment and let me know what you want to learn next, and as always, take care.